Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us on a panel today for jumpstarting the electric vehicle market. My name is Britta, and I have the honor of having two wonderful ladies on stage, uh, Tina and Monica. And uh, when we think about the electric vehicle market, we probably don't think about Croatia. Um, it's a country with four million people, and uh, that's about the size of Lisbon. Yet there's role models there who are driving the adoption of electric vehicles. And um, Monica, you're the CEO of uh, Remac, a developer and producer of the supercar. We just heard uh, 1,300 uh, horsepowers. What made you join the company? And I believe you brought a video for us. Yes, exactly. So I have met Mate in 2010, our founder and CEO. And the idea of creating the fastest electric supercar was something that got me uh, at the first sight. So as you can see, we have created uh, really the world's uh, most powerful electric supercar. We competed with Bugatti, we have competed with LaFerrari, with Porsche 918, and of course we won again of all of those races. But what is maybe uh, more important that we have not only created a supercar, electric supercar, we are a technology company. And we produce and develop all of the technology for the supercar in-house, but we also uh, produce and develop that technology for many other clients in the automotive industry. So there are some projects that we do that are public, like for Aston Martin for Koenigsegg, uh, for example, for Jaguar Land Rover, but there are also many under, other in the industry that we cooperate. Unfortunately, I'm not able to disclose those ones. Uh, we are currently a company of 250 people, around 10 dogs, as you can see. We are really friendly, still a startup culture. Um, from 2014, um, we had a really high growth of like 20 people at that uh, time to 250 people currently. Also, the growth is revenue was followed by that, and uh, we got awarded by Deloitte as uh, one of the fastest growing tech companies in the region. And we basically just closed our uh, second round of financing of 30 million euros that keeps us going and continue forward. Wonderful, that's great news, and congratulations on the yeah. <laughs> Thank you. investment. <laughs> Well, one of the most iconic figures for electric energy comes from Croatia. Um, it's Nikola Tesla. And uh, yeah. you named your EV rally after him. What made you come up with the idea to do a rally in Croatia? Well, Nikola Tesla was born in Croatia. And uh, as Monica said, they started very early. And uh, we fell in love with e-mobility and electric vehicles around 2009. And then we started to think about the idea what would be the best way to promote e-mobility electric vehicles because we are a small country but as you said we have two producers of electric vehicles in Croatia Rimac Automobili is one there is also one other company uh, called Docking they also have uh, they also produce electric vehicle so we decided to to promote these great things and we started to think about the way what would be the best way to promote it so we said okay so let's do a rally because rally is always interesting it's cars supercars so let's do a rally to promote e mobility and uh, show Croatia and the world what we have because we have really amazing things to show and also it was a very good way uh, to, to show the importance of infrastructure because at the time we started to organize rally in 2013, there were like four electric vehicles, uh, two of them were Concept One and uh, there were char four uh, uh, charging stations for electric vehicles. So we decided uh, to, to show that it's really important to build the infrastructure for electric vehicles and I think that we are the only rally in the world that left after the rally uh, 11 charging stations uh, in Croatia. And this is uh, uh, the idea that we had uh, to uh, construct the green electric highway because Croatia is a tourist country. And even though there is a small number of electric vehicles even now, but 85% of tourists in Croatia, they come with electric vehicles. So this is the idea behind the rally that actually after five years, uh, grew to a premium tourist event and we have participants uh, not only from Europe but from all parts of the world and uh, we're enjoying what we do and this was the idea. Sounds mm -hmm. like it, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, when you started with the company you were also responsible for looking for investors and what do you, are the experiences that you had up to now where you got the big investment round? as a small company from Croatia going into a new market with electric vehicles where adoption in Europe is not 
so far? Definitely one of the biggest challenges that we have in our history was financing. Mm -hmm. And back then when we started in 2011, it was really hard to find somebody who, would, who was willing to invest in Croatia. And Mate had this idea to keep the company in Croatia, to create you know, uh, opportunity for young people to work on something exciting. And we were struggling. So we closed our first round of investment only in 2014. Uh, the good thing was that we have created all of the technology for the supercar. So basically that technology helped us survive up to 2014 while we close our first round of investment. And I noticed that even now, it's a bit hard to get financing in Croatia. Think about it, Croatia doesn't have venture capital funds. So as a startup, building a supercar in Croatia, what were the odds that we are going to make it? Basically, at the beginning, nobody believed that it is possible. But I think now things have changed, and we have shown what our technology can do and what we are capable of, so things are a little bit easier. Yes, I believe that. Is that the same experience that you had when setting up the rally? What yes, were the unfortunately, challenges you faced? yes, this is what Monica says. Uh, investors are not actually fighting to, to invest in Croatia. So when we started in 2014, it was very difficult for us. As I said, there was no infrastructure and uh, there were no actually electric vehicles, only the crazy enthusiasts that uh, were trying to do something. So when we started, there was no support from the government. Uh, actually, uh, everybody was saying, you're crazy, you're never going to make it, give up. Uh, from some government institutions, they were even calling our partners and saying back down from the project, because if you support this project, then uh, you will not be able to sell your products to us. And so it was quite difficult. But uh, as we always say, there is one person that makes a difference. And if you're crazy enough and uh, you find partners that are crazy enough to support you, mm -hmm. then anything is possible. So we managed to find these crazy people <laughs> in Croatia, in Slovenia, in Austria that supported us. And actually, this first year in 2014, we had uh, 76 uh, electric vehicles uh, that passed the route of 800 kilometers. So it was quite a success, actually. Right, and uh, yeah. what type of partners are these? I mean, to get an idea, are these big corporations or no, special actually, people? No, it was like Rimac Automobili. They supported us from the first year. They came with their investor, actually, in birthplace of Nikola Tesla, uh, with their bikes. Uh, there was another um, uh, electric vehicle rent -a car that was the first one in Croatia and Slovenia. There was a docking company that is also uh, doing uh, very significant work in some other areas. Uh, from Austria, our partners, and uh, also help from Slovenia. So it's not like big corpor corporations, but uh, small companies at the time. And uh, they decided it was a project uh, worth supporting, so they came to our aid, they supported us, and together I think we did a great thing. Because 76 electric vehicles in a land without infrastructure to pass the route of 800 kilometers, it was really a success. Yes, I believe that. And uh, you mentioned the infrastructure. I also heard that you're working on a new project. Yes. Can you speak about that for infrastructure? Yeah, it's uh, something that actually we came up uh, uh, as an idea to uh, go around HEP. Uh, HEP is a, a government-owned uh, uh, distributor for elect electric energy. And uh, the fees for electric energy for just to connect to the grid in Croatia are the highest in Europe. So, for example, if you want to uh, put a charging station that is uh, two by 22 kilowatts, the price is 4,000 euro. But just to connect to the grid, it's 8,000 euro. 8, euro. So it's really crazy that uh, the charging station itself uh, costs less than just uh, the connection to the grid. So we started to uh, think, okay, how can we go around this? So uh, we came up with this concept of uh, autonomous uh, solar charging stations with battery management system, which is not so revolutionary by itself because there are other projects and uh, companies that are developing such things. Uh, but the innovation in the whole concept is uh, that is uh, like uh, a charging station uh, for electric vehicles, like a gas station. So you have a virtual reality room uh, where you can uh, kill time while you wait for charging. Uh, also, all the things that you can buy, food or drink, uh, it is from local producers. It is uh, naturally grown. It's eco-production. So it's um, uh, like a charging station for electric vehicles, like regular charging station. So yeah. it's very exciting. So I think that's one point that we need to do um, to 
convince the consumers to go to electric vehicles to uh, decrease the range anxiety that we're doing with the infrastructure. Yeah. What else do we need to do to win over the customer to switch to electric cars? Monica. We are looking at it from a perspective of customers that are buying supercars. And most of them have a problem with electric cars because they don't have sound. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the challenges that you have when you're trying to sell electric supercar. And most of them, um, when they experience the concept one, because we have a four motors, two in the front, two in the back, and each motor is controlling each wheel separately, hundreds of times per second. So basically, you can brake with one wheel while accelerating with three others, and do completely the opposite in another millisecond. And when customers try it, then they see the difference, and then they realize, OK, maybe I don't miss that sound so much, so things change. But people are creatures of habit, and sometimes it's hard to change that habit. I bet. But you also said that you're uh, not only manufacturing the supercar, you're developing for other car makers. Um, can you talk a little bit about the type of uh, vehicles you're working on? Since we were really pioneers in electric vehicles, um, what is special about our company is that we are capable to do like the, from the first scratch on the paper, like from the first design until the finished product, we can do everything in-house. And in that way, we are capable of supporting different companies in the automotive industry if they need only a battery from us or motor for us, or maybe some of them actually come and ask for the complete development of the car that they are going to produce afterwards. So it's really hard. I'm not able to disclose much about those projects. But uh, for Aston Martin, it's public that for their new car, Aston Martin Red Bull Valkyra, we are producing a battery pack. Oh, okay. But it's more on the premium sector then or mass market? Can you mention? So currently, we are working on pro projects that are, um, I would say, more like in sports segment, sports car segment. So small units, like um, for Koenigsegg, 100 units of battery, uh, the same for Aston Martin. But uh, that's the transition that the company is going through right now. So our plan is to jump from 250 people to 1,000 people. And our goal is to accept projects that are going more mar mass market, so in a thousands of units per year. And we are actually going to produce our batteries, our motors in thousands of units per year and supply even more mainstream manufacturers. So that's the transition that we are go currently going through. Right. But I mean, if we look at the diesel affair, we need, we need more um, and not everybody can afford a supercar. So what do we need to do to win over the mass market? Well, first thing, uh, I, we what we always say, first thing is user experience, because everybody always asks, oh, how it is to drive electric vehicle? And we always say, you cannot actually compare. You have to try it, and then when you get the feeling, like Monica said, when you go electric, you will not miss the normal engine and or the normal sound. So driving electric vehicle, uh, especially with so many horsepower, it's very special. So we drive Tesla, it's our company car. And uh, when they ask always, oh, how it feels, how was it the first time that you tried it? I always say it's like it was the most natural thing ever for me. So first of all, you have to try it. It's the user experience. Um, the second thing is uh, with user experience, you will overcome the range anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I, I also had a range anxiety when I started. So when I started on my first trip, I was like, OK, am I going to make it? Is this calculating right? But uh, you have to try everything to know it. And also, uh, as technology advances, the prices will go down. So this is, I think, a very important thing, because electric vehicles uh, in this phase, uh, even not only supercars or this segment, uh, they are much more expensive than regular cars. So as technology advances, the prices will decrease. So this is one thing that will make electric vehicles uh, uh, more accessible to the mass market. Let's say it like this. But also, it's very important, the government role is very important because, uh, as we can see, I, I always use the example of Norway. Mm -hmm. 
because Norway, uh, they, they had this huge package of uh, uh, measurements, uh, not only free parking, not only uh, charging stations, but also um, no tax for uh, electric vehicles. Uh, incentives were very high and very good. Mm -hmm. So Norway now has the largest percentage of electric vehicles in the world. So as we can see, the role of government is very important. Also in Croatia, we are trying to uh, convince our government to, to support this, and uh, because without this support in the first early stages, uh, it's really not uh, logical to, to rational to expect uh, uh, electric vehicles to become mass market. Right. I so think that question, are we, are the future going to be electric uh, or gas powered is already decided. It's only a matter of time. Um, big companies are, tend to be slow uh, and they need a longer time. Also the same is with the governments. They need a longer time to move forward. Right, but should we, should we then promote the a banning of diesel cars, gasoline cars in the city to start with it? I think some of the cities already started, so it's just a matter of time yeah. when it will spread among other cities. Right. Out of interest in the, in the audience, can you give me a show of hands of uh, how many of you have uh, driven an electric vehicle for experience? Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. Maybe that's not the right audience <laughs> here. They're all interested in that. <laughs> that's great. So, um, yeah, what else do we need to do then? If we, we start with banning the electric vehicles, and what's the next step after that? Are we going to drive autonomously in the cities? Yeah, that, that was my opinion that uh, is it going to be electric? It's already decided that the next step is going autonomous, definitely. Um, and I think that's a big change that is waiting for us. And that change is going to affect a lot of things. It's so going to affect uh, many workplaces that we have today that are going to be rethink about in the future. Um, it is going to also affect the infra infrastructure, how we think about it right now. Because now governments are mostly thinking about, okay, if we are building an infrastructure for electric vehicles, we are thinking that customers are possessing those electric vehicles. But once we go autonomous, there will be no need to possess your own vehicle. And I think in most of the cases that will come really natural because young people don't have a need to own a car anymore. Um, I think they are more like thinking about a car as a matter of transportation. And for them it will be more convenient if you have application, you call your autonomous vehicle, the car comes, picks you up and leave you where you like and you don't have to take care about the service cleaning of the car, uh, parking of the car, and all other things that you have. And charging of the car, because yes. we do that autonomously yeah. at the uh, things. So um, yeah. we're almost ready with the panel now. Just one last word of a recommendation. If you have a similar country like Croatia, what would you recommend to them to speed up the adoption of EVs? Well. I don't believe in banning. I don't believe in, in, in uh, punishing something, not even the IC drivers. <laughs> I believe in um, incentives. So uh, as a government, uh, as a country or whatever, I think you can do a lot uh, by steering the country in the right direction with incentives and not punishing them. So uh, I think the role of the government, as Monica said, the government, the government, the governments and the big companies, they're never going to be the leader of change because the systems are too big. But uh, that's why you have small companies, crazy individuals uh, that are doing things in that way. But I think the government, in the end, also should ensure the conditions in which those governments, uh, those companies are working and uh, they should um, give incentives to make them uh, progress more, more fast and uh, make their life more easy. Okay. I think entrepreneurs are important. You know, you know, they need to jump and build a parachute on their way and move the economy yeah. and the government and everything else. Wonderful. I think those were uh, final words. Wonderful, great final words. Thank you for being on the panel Thank tonight. You. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you.